Have you ever found yourself struggling against the currents of life, wondering why every step feels like an uphill battle? Have you ever stopped to wonder if there might be a simpler, more harmonious way to live amidst the chaos of modern life? What if the secret to overcoming stress and anxiety lies not in more effort, but in the ancient wisdom of flowing with life rather than resisting it? Join us as we delve into the profound teachings of Taoism. This is a journey towards understanding the power of letting go, embracing simplicity, and finding peace within. Now, on to our video. The hectic pace of our days makes us feel tension and even fatigue. Stress is one of the main sources of illness and can also cause depression and anxiety. Fortunately, the texts of the ancient Taoist masters contain many philosophical reflections that can help us alleviate tension and reduce our constant worries. From the Taoist perspective, we resist the natural course of life when we try to force things. Forcing means intervening or even going against nature, which only leads to difficulties according to the Taoists. If we observe many of today's societies, we realize that most people continue to force their way. Furthermore, many times we feel overwhelmed by stress and fatigue caused by the accelerated pace of modern life. Stress is a factor that can influence our physical and mental health, causing illnesses, depression, and anxiety. However, we can find wisdom and comfort in the texts of the ancient Taoist masters, which offer philosophical reflections to alleviate stress and calm our minds. The Taoists teach us that we should flow with nature and not oppose it. When we try to force things or go against the natural order, we create only difficulties and conflicts. On the contrary, if we observed and accepted what nature offers, we could live with more harmony and inner peace. Normally, we not only try to modify nature to our liking, but also attempt to control things over which we have no real control, such as destiny and external circumstances. We are obsessed with control, and the Taoist masters teach the opposite, letting go. In the ancient Taoist texts, the Tao, the King, the less famous Chuang Tzu's book, and the concept of letting go are recurring themes. The enigmatic author of the Tao Te Ching recalls how nature takes care of itself and that without interference, everything unfolds. Furthermore, he observes how we are obsessed with seeking happiness in the external world and how our efforts to obtain it and our attachment to external circumstances make us unhappy. We are unwilling to let go of our restless craving to be happy, which is precisely why we are not truly happy. Our efforts not to be unhappy generate anxiety. The texts of the ancient Taoists invite us to take a different direction. We must let go of existing concepts and views of the world, become aware of emptiness, let nature take its course, and flow with it instead of going against it. The goal is a simpler life with fewer worries, following the Tao, the universal principle. Tao is the first antidote. This video explores ancient Taoist reflections that can serve as antidotes to reduce agitation in an out-of-control world. Leaving things as they are is the first point. The Taoist master Zhuangzi knew how to do nothing. He did not intervene in natural processes because he knew that nature would be disturbed and would become something it is not. In many modern cultures that value success and performance, doing nothing is seen as a waste. We do not give ourselves permission to do nothing because we must always be active. We choose to work against nature instead of doing nothing, even if our actions only make it harder to achieve what we want. When we leave things alone, we respect their natural flow. Our environment does not always require our interference, both at work and at home. Problems often resolve themselves, and life eventually adapts, whether we like the result or not. What seems like misfortune can be a disguised opportunity, and what we see as success can backfire on us. Furthermore, the universe operates as it wishes, so trying to control it is futile. The second antidote is to stop chasing happiness. Zhuangzi did not know if what busy people sought was happiness or not, but he could see that the ways they tried to obtain it made them unhappy. People are always busy running in their obsessive pursuit of happiness. They seem tired and sad. 
Zhuangzi invites us to give up the pursuit of happiness because he considers it a source of suffering and frustration. We consume ourselves seeking things that do not fill our hearts, like money or fame, and that also generate fear of losing them. As Zhuangzi said, those who believe that money is all that matters cannot let go of their earnings. Those who aspire to recognition cannot let go of the idea of glory. Those who cling to power cannot relinquish control to others. While clinging to these things, they fear losing them. When they let go, they become anxious and see no example that can make them see the absurdity of their concerns. These individuals are doomed by fate. Zhuangzi suggests that fullness and well-being are possible if we stop treating them as goals. If we do not desire happiness and well-being, the harm of not having what we want and the right to obtain what we desire disappear. Therefore, we do not worry about seeking or not seeking happiness. Instead, we play with happiness because we have stopped worrying about chasing it. The third antidote is contemplating emptiness. Zhuangzi believed that people generally like compliments because they feel good when others appreciate their successes. But he appreciated emptiness because when we are empty of all those attachments, we are less tense and have fewer things to worry about. If we did not feel that the approval of others is so important, we would have less to worry about. Zhuangzi said that we always try to receive merits for things that are not entirely our own merit. What truly makes us proud of ourselves? Many times we are influenced by compliments from others, but are they really ours? Most of the things they praise about us depend on external factors or qualities we have not cultivated. For example, Instagram models who receive thousands of likes mainly receive them for being born with a beauty that fits current standards. So what real merit do we have? Zhuangzi invites us to reflect and let go, realizing how empty everything is. We can find tranquility and inner harmony if we learn to be calm in this chaotic world. Otherwise, we will be involved in all kinds of pointless conflicts. Many of the things we seek are illusory. They only have the value we give them. Compliments are illusory and often, though not always, do not even correspond to reality. The same goes for many other activities we consider important, but that make no sense. It seems that we do them just to escape emptiness. But if we accept this emptiness, embrace it, and set aside all these games, competitions, and endless races in our constant pursuit of happiness, we would be better off. The fourth antidote is inner law. According to the Taoist sage Lao Tzu, if we ask ourselves for more than we can do, we create problems for ourselves. In his profound work, the Tao Te Ching, he said that those who stand on tiptoe do not stand firm and those who rush do not advance. Rising on tiptoe and trying to control what we cannot control. In the book The Way of Chuang Tzu, it explains the difference between a person whose law is within and a person whose law is outside. The first person acts without depending on the approval and disapproval of others. The second person is driven by things beyond their control, making them a puppet of their circumstances. What happens in the external world determines their mood. When they try to exert their power over objects, those objects take control of them. As Zhuangzi said, when things go well, the second person is happy and satisfied. When things go wrong, they are unhappy and full of worries. They constantly seek what they want and try to avoid what they don't want. Always worried about a universe they ultimately cannot control. The one who tries to extend their control is just a manipulator, while the one who believes they are surpassing others is seen by others as simply stretching and standing on tiptoe. Everything around us is beyond control, but the more control we have over our thoughts, choices, and attitudes towards the external, the less we will depend on external satisfaction, and the less we will have to strive to obtain it. The fifth antidote is not distressing oneself about fate, Zhuangzi observed that it is not the future itself that troubles people, but the distress about the future. For example, an archer can shoot perfectly during practice but poorly when competing for a prize. As soon as we desire a specific outcome, we stress ourselves with the fear of not achieving it. The archer in Zhuangzi's story shot well when he shot just for the sake of shooting, but when there was a prize at stake, 
He became agitated even though his skill had not changed. He thought more about winning than shooting, and the need to win consumed him. How can we face an uncertain future knowing that there is a possibility of fortune or misfortune? Zhuangzi tells the story of an elderly man in the kingdom of Chu who was afraid that the sky could collapse and the earth could open up. If that happened, he would have nowhere to escape, and his death would be inevitable. So, a friend tried to reassure him by telling him that the sky would never collapse. However, a wise person told him that there was actually a possibility that the sky could collapse, even though the odds were low. Therefore, the elderly man should not torment himself too much. The sage said, It doesn't even make sense to think about whether the sky and earth could be destroyed. We can live our lives without worries. However, if they were to be destroyed, it would be something we could do nothing about. So why worry? The ancient Taoist sage asserted that worrying about whether the earth would disappear or not is something completely beyond our control. If it happens, it happens. Furthermore, we do not even know exactly what will happen after we go through that destiny. What does it mean to be dead exactly? Or what happens, for example, when we lose our job or a marriage ends? Suppose these events are disasters, even though they could be blessings in disguise. Again, whatever happens is beyond our control. So worrying about it is futile. 